That'll be yeah. fun. Perfect. Yay. Hello. Hello. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Mission Pixel. Today, I have a new guest for the Creator Spotlight video series, um, and it is the fantastic Will Khan. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, welcome on the show. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me. So we've worked recently together on, on a few projects. We have. Uh, You've done much filming for me. Yeah, it's, it's been awesome. Bizarre is the word <laughs> we went for. It's been that, bizarre. That too, that too. There were some strange weird things. things um but yeah uh more on that later uh so if you guys don't know who will khan is he um is a filmmaker extraordinaire uh uh to be, <laughs> to be. There we go. and uh a youtuber mm -hmm. uh, so you've had several channels in the past yep and uh you've done all the things apparently many uh, things as, as far as I know you've you've done many things. So could you just walk us through like how you you got started and how you ended up where you are now? Wow. Okay, I'll do an abridged. Though. Yeah, yeah, of course. So <laughs> I started my first YouTube channel in two thousand and seven, and that was classic like lip syncing music videos with my friends mucking about. We made one short film. That was it. And then I started doing educational videos, which was making revision videos for uh, students doing psychology and physics and maths, and they took off. Yeah, that, went, that, mental. that went really well. I'm, I'm just wondering, how many subs, how many numbers did you so get? So we had, I only got about 5,000 subs, but at its peak, we were getting about 200,000 views in a month. Damn, damn. Which was a lot for someone with 5K subs. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> And yeah, the watch time was insane. We started making some dollar, some coin, which I spent completely on making branded mugs and giving them to everyone who helped me. <laughs> um, and buying new cameras and stuff. Um, but yeah, no, that was really good. Mm -hmm. But then I finished all the courses that I was doing, making revision videos on. So I no longer could make educational videos. So I started making films instead. So you were, always into filmmaking as in making short films and, and stories and things along those lines. Mm -hmm. So how did, how did you go from making the videos that you were making and instead of maybe trying to find other ways of continuing that, how did you decide to go, right, I clearly can't make any more educational videos, I'm going to make this now. So how did you come up with that? It took a long time. I started by making a series that was a fictional series on what is now my second channel that I don't use called Parodying YouTube. It was a 12 part series. The idea was I would parody other YouTube channels and it was my first like creative thing that I made. And it was quite successful and it got me into YouTube properly and I met quite a, ton of, a few YouTubers through it. Um, but that's when I decided I wanted to make a film but making a film is very difficult, only because I think you need to know a lot of people. So mm, I spent yeah. about a year getting to know enough people so that I could make my first short film. Okay. And actually that segues fantastically into my next question, uh, which, is, <laughs> which is how you got involved with YouTube Space. Uh, YouTube Space. Because I believe you visited I went up all the time. So yeah. it was just when I finished parodying YouTube, I went to the space for the first time, which used to be at Tottenham Court Road. It was the old one. It was like a corridor in the YouTube offices. And I went there for an event. I don't remember what it was, but shortly after that, I was invited to the Halloween party. And that was my first big event mm. where I went along. I was so nervous and I met a ton of friends there. And then once I'd been once, I would met all the time. Yeah. Like yeah. all the time. And then they moved it to King's Cross and I knew the staff there, so they kept inviting me even though I was under the sub limits and I wasn't really uploading at the time. And yeah, I just went there all the time and met most of my friends there. Awesome. That's really good. Awesome. And now they've stopped doing that because they're snakes. Yeah, I know. YouTube seems to be going to a weird place lately. Yeah, they don't have any money. Corporate. That's the secret. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's always been, I think, well, I hope well known. Mm -hmm. I've always known that YouTube was a very not profitable business. <laughs> yeah, but they really don't have any money anymore. Yeah, yeah, 
in case you didn't know, newsflash, YouTube Spot. has been broke since mm -hmm. they started. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fantastic platform nonetheless. Mm -hmm. um, so another question I wanted to get into is uh, your film making and because uh, you left university doing um, mathematics or was, was it yeah, business? Yeah, it was maths. It was maths. It was okay. maths, mathematics with yeah. economics. Ah, uh, there we go. See, because in the back of my brain, I remember economics. Anyway, yeah, econ. it was mathematics. I so, thought I should forget about it as well. If that <laughs> so you, you dropped out of that. Um, I can relate, I dropped out of engineering, uh, <laughs> which is basically the same thing. Yeah. Um, and um, you went on to do film production at university. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure there's a lot of people in the world that are interested in maybe not doing exactly that because I would not recommend finish university. Do it. Do. Don't do what we did. <laughs> Don't do what we did. Um, but yeah, I mean, how did you get into that filmmaking? And if you have any tips for people who might be looking to make that step and to go to film school or to start making a similar films that you do because uh, i mean you don't really have a style of filmmaking because i mean that takes many films mm -hmm. um but like you know everything about filmmaking right like not all everything aspects, all the aspects <laughs> okay that's I guess what i mean i know a broad overview yeah how to make films i think it's just I was making stuff. So at my old university, I had a radio show that I was working on that was getting quite successful. I've made two plays. Um, I think I directed two and then produced a third or four, I can't remember. Um, so I was being really creative all the time and making stuff, which is basically what a producer does. But at the time I didn't really know the job of a producer and what it actually was. I just thought it was someone who has lots of money and gives it to people. But <laughs> yeah. small time producers, which exist, are basically people who come up with creative projects and make them, which is my dream job. And it's what I'm finding myself doing now. Mm. I'd love to be paid for it one day. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I was doing that already. And the only reason I went to film school is because it was, at the one I'm at anyway, it was three years of being able to keep doing that. So I could just make whatever I wanted and then at the end get given a degree for it as well. So that's pretty good. It is, it is the dream. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's why I went to film school and I knew a lot of basics because I think if you do anything on YouTube, you know the basics of how a camera works, yeah. how to kind of light a little bit and the general like editing process. Also, if you watch my YouTube channel, you'll know that too. <sighs> yeah, tips and tricks, <laughs> plug right here. Shameless. But um, <laughs> but yeah, when you go to film school, you learn the filmmaking side of it. And initially, yeah. I think it seems quite alien and quite backwards and traditional, a lot of the methods that they use. Because mm. it's very, like anything at university, it's like, it's very official. There are certain ways to do things and like processes. Yeah, yeah. But the, the more you start applying them, the more it makes sense and the more I started kind of merging YouTube and film techniques into one. Mm. So stupid things like risk assessments. If I were to oh, yeah. just mention the word risk assessment to a YouTuber, they'd look at me like I was a fool, but I will never do a film shoot without a risk assessment anymore. Simply because when I didn't do a risk assessment, this is a famous story, um, I broke someone's arm. Ooh. And part of it, and it was my fault, and they could sue me, but we're good friends. Oh, okay. Um, very lucky on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm only friends with them so they don't sue me. That's <laughs> not true. Um, but yeah, it's such a boring thing, but it's something that you learn the official mm. processes for and yeah. you learn why that's the case. And yeah. Yeah, I did risk assessments for days at university. Oh my okay. God, the horror. Uh -huh. But now I do it all the time. <laughs> like, it's just a part of what I do. And it can be as ridiculous as like, don't trip over my tripod, please, to be like, oh, we're shooting a scene with two cars driving along the road with like a camera person in it and whatever, and the police have to be notified. This mm. is quite serious. And yeah. I only know how to do that because I also know to like write a little note that being like, everyone tape down your wires so you don't fall over. So it like scales up. Yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a lot of the part I think YouTubers don't <coughs> pay attention to because like, it's hard to know all of the aspects of filmmaking, yeah. uh, especially if all you're doing is just setting up a camera and 
pointing like, it out your face. Licensing as well is another one that's coming in because Article 13, dum dum dum, he mentioned it, yeah. um, is a thing that EU's doing, which is kind of like making online video a lot more liable and professional. Yeah. And in the filmmaking world, licensing is such a big deal when you're a producer. You have to license people, you have to license locations, mm. and like get everything signed and whatever, which YouTubers never do. Um, yeah. And now it's because it's changing in law, so it's becoming a thing that YouTubers are having to take notice of. Mm. And so, yeah, it's helpful to have that filmmaking experience. Yeah, that's true. For all the boring things, like you can't just point a camera at someone and film them and do whatever like on YouTube. When you're making a film, there's so much behind the scenes that you have to also do. Yeah. So film school is about learning that as yeah. well. That is. Yeah. I might go. <laughs> yeah, go. But you can also not learn it at yeah, that's all. True, that's true. The only advantage going to film school is you learn what you need to learn, if that makes sense. Yes. So it's that you have no idea what you don't know mm -hmm. until you go to film school and they teach you what you don't know, if that makes sense. So you yeah. can not go to film school if you can find a way of learning what you don't know already. Yeah, so, so like, if you somehow manage to squeeze yourself into the film industry and work as a runner and build your way up, then mm -hmm. you'll eventually gather all the knowledge necessary. Yeah. As same as going to film school. Exactly, and there are websites, there are YouTube channels. I know. Um, but yeah. there's a website called No Film School, which funnily enough, our film school sends us links to all the time. <laughs> but it is so good, it's a really good website. I think um, I've been on there actually a few times. Yeah, it's got loads of different tips and things. Really but yeah, it is, top tip is just you accepting that you probably don't even know what you don't know. Yes. So it's not a case of, I want to learn a camera, so look up a camera guide. Like there are probably so many different things that you're not even aware of. Mm. and it's. Becoming aware of the things that you don't know is probably the biggest learning step. Okay. Top tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that just reminds me of one of the videos I made. Top tip Tuesday. Top Jeez. tip Tuesday. Yeah. It only Sunday, had one Tim. episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, another question that I had. All of the ask. questions. All of the questions. Tim has many questions yes, today. Yes, of course. I always have many questions. <laughs> That's why I work with Curious Pavel, because he has uh -huh. He is many literally curious. It's yeah. in his name. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, one of the other questions I wanted to ask is, um, you made a short film, but well, still polishing. It's technically a fe feature film, we'll be honest. Finishing. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, finishing. The length, length-wise, it's, it's a feature Long. film. Yeah. But you call it a short film, because to you, it is a short it's film. It's indie film. Indie film, okay. Indie film. Is that a better description of it? I made an indie it? film. I'll go with that. Okay. Because, I mean, I, just, I always um, differentiate them as indie films and big budget Hollywood blockbusters. And there's nothing in between. <laughs> there's nothing in between. You're just going to jump. In my brain, yeah. There's, okay. You make an indie film and then the next thing you know, you're directing an Avengers film. That's how it works. <laughs> that is how it works. That is how the film industry works, yeah. everyone. This is why you go to film school. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to make it in there. Um, yeah. Alright, so the, another question I wanted to ask is, uh, based on your uh, new film, uh, Dear Will Khan. Dear Will Khan. I won't sing the song. Carry on. I've, I've heard that song like 50 times on Have Spotify you? already. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I was wondering, what uh, challenges did you face? What was the biggest challenge you faced, apart from no spoilers ahead. Uh, the the main challenge of the, the film, the content, the, of the, the content film. of the film coming yeah. soon. Um, so this it was a bizarre film. So the concept of the film was to write a film, and it was scripted, and then it, I would film it over like it. It was originally three months of my life, and it would star me. And wherever I went, I would write a storyline that could be filmed as I went along. Mm. So like. I went to, I was planning to go to America, so I was going to write a storyline so that in the film, Will Khan has a reason to go to America and something happens in America and it's, it like builds. Because mm. in a series I've made the year before and the year before that where I just vlogged for three months. The difficulty with real life is it doesn't really have a narrative. So when you're yeah. writing, you tend to write in what's called a three act structure. So you have a beginning, a middle and an end. Mm. And it's got to kind of grow to keep people engaged. And with vlogging, that doesn't happen because 
if I did a three part series, October, November, December, and something big and like amazing had to happen at the end of December for it to be like, it's the finale. Yeah. And it didn't because it was just new year. And then I went into January. So yeah, that was the concept. Mm. Um, so I wrote a script and I went off and filmed it and then had a crisis and contents of the film. And then I completely rewrote it in the summer after I'd filmed it and then filmed some pickups. So the hardest thing was taking everything I'd done and completely rewriting it. Yeah, I guess that must and have And completely been. coming up with a new film. Um, it's kind of, there's a style of documentary filmmaking, which you learn at film school. I feel like I'm doing an advert <laughs> at film school. Um, which is where you use archive footage. So it's where you kind of take loads of old footage and you construct a story out of it. Okay. Which is basically what I was doing because Although I hope when you watch it, it feels like it's one big cohesive thing that flows. Mm. It was very much a load of footage that I then wrote a story around and then attached it. So it feels like it is meant yeah. to be like that way. Yeah. So hopefully when you're watching the sequences, you feel like I wrote it and then went and filmed it rather than I filmed it and then wrote it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, I, th I think it does, having seen the film, I think it does feel very connected. Good. Uh, this so, is the plan. Yeah. But um, also a fun challenge though, mm. and it was the weirdest thing that I had to film, and I'm gonna throw it out here because you were there. Oh yeah. <laughs> which I feel like it's not a spoiler, um, but we filmed a sequence where I was recreating a date that I went on. That's mm. not a spoiler. I don't think that's a spoiler. No, I don't think it's a spoiler. I think it adds to the film, if anything, because I don't mention it in the film. Yeah. But um, it was the weirdest thing I've ever filmed because the way we shot it was okay. like there were two people on a date, me being one of them, but we never saw the other person. And it meant that they were never there. I was yeah. just talking to the void like this. I was yeah. like, hello. I remember actually watching the film and lip reading you saying, I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I think the That's only I reason I recognized that is because I was there yeah. and filming, <laughs> but- I was going, yeah <laughs> this is really weird but yeah having tim following me around with a camera as i'm recreating a date that happened literally weeks before mm. was the weirdest thing and i don't know how i did that i'm very extra mm. but i mean that it, happened i think um taking inspiration or in your case directly copying <laughs> real life events in filmmaking is very important because it makes it feel more grounded like if you're completely coming up with a whole new idea, there's a possibility that you go a bit too far and you over exaggerate certain parts and people get disconnected. Yeah. But the way that that scene and that sequence was shot is there was a lot of like you could tell that this was organic and mm. it flowed in a way that it definitely happened. It wasn't like oh, it's just, you know, him going to a cafe and talking to himself, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Fair. Yeah, well, I'm so, glad it came across that way, but yeah. it was weird. Like, we even ordered the exact same coffees and you had to drink the other coffee because I wasn't yeah. going to have two. Yeah. And I was already after two coffees, yeah. so I was... <laughs> Buzzing. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's shaky. Oh. <laughs> smooth. It's yeah, smooth. That's why I got the run in. Mm -hmm. I can have as many coffees as I want. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yesterday I was filming and my hands were like this, but the footage still looks... Wow, I'm so. going to introduce you to decaf sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to meet this amazing <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But I think I answered your question. The yeah. premiere as well was probably the most challenging part really? as well. Because that was... Because the most scary thing, I think, with the project is showing it to everyone when it's done. Because it's like your child. I've been working mm. on that for like two years. Yeah. And I hadn't had time to show it to anyone. I showed it to one person before this premiere where like 70 people came and watched it. Yeah. And so having that was a lot. That was intense. Mm. So I planned to talk about it a lot afterwards, but I was just, I was overwhelmed at the time. Yeah. I guess it's probably a good thing that the audience was also quite overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there weren't many questions from the audience. I got that at the end. At which... the end, I went up to the top and I looked at it and I just saw this see your faces who are like yeah it's a bit awkward <laughs> but yeah i think it went fantastically well so thank you tim 
All right, guys. Um, thank you for watching. This has been a uh, interview with uh, Will Khan, the fantastic and fabulous and flamboyant Will Khan. That's me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, ho I hope you enjoyed that insight. Uh, and definitely go follow all of the Will Khan social medias because all of them. You're active on everything. I am very active. Uh, which I, I find extremely posts. impressive. Uh -huh. I could not in the never ever. It's do. called procrastination, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> well, my procrastination uh, includes a computer and a lot of video games. So yeah, that's probably. I wouldn't recommend. Yeah. No. Why produce films, Tim, when you can tweet? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I'm gonna get that on a T-shirt. Merch Perfect. coming soon. Merch coming soon. <laughs> 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 Alright guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.